Hi there, this is John from Blah Wars. It's a podcast, a Star Wars based podcast. Um, and I'm going to be showing you how to build a War Games table for Star Wars Legion, specifically for Star Wars Legion. Well, in theory, you could use this method on any uh, war game you might be playing or getting into, but Star Wars Legion is around the corner. It's going to be the first miniatures game from Fantasy Flight Games, Star Wars related, which sort of encourages terrain building and uh, painting the miniatures and, and all that kind of thing. Star Wars Imperial Assault didn't really go into that. Obviously the painting of, of miniatures was optional, but in this one assembling the miniatures and painting them is definitely encouraged and with that you're going to want to build terrain, you're going to want to build scenery, um, and it's going to be cool, you're going to be able to finally, finally we've got an excuse to build really cool Star Wars um, environments. So, how do you go about doing it? Now, if you're <coughs> wondering, oh, I don't have a saw, I don't have any kind of power tools, you don't really, you don't really need a great deal of things to do this, so I'm going to teach you how to do it. First thing you're going to want to do, Let's get down to your local hardware shop, whether that's B&Q or whatever, um, and go down to the hard sort of uh, cut boards section and you're going to see what's available there. Um, I recommend going with plywood. You can go with MDF if you want, but MDF, which you may be aware of, is um, much heavier. It's like compacted kind of dust and it's bloody heavy. And um, it, you'll really notice that when you're lifting your board around. Uh, anyway, so you go down and you get yourself a nice bit of board and get them to cut it out at, um, and get, you can take it over and get, they will cut it for you to size. Um, you, what you're gonna want them to cut it to about three foot by three foot. So you've got that nice square. Now, I've personally gone for slightly smaller than that. I've gone for 900 mils by 900 mils. It's literally just a little bit under three foot. But um, the reason for that is simply my table is 900 mils wide and I just want the board to fit perfectly rather than overhang. So um, that was why, so all my following measurements are suited for a 900 by 900 board, not a three foot board. So once you've gone down and got this, you may be tempted to then take it home and start covering it in glue and painting all over it. I would say to you, please do not do that. OK, before you do that, you're going to want to reinforce this board because the second you start covering it in glue and paint, you're going to start to see as that stuff dries, it's going to gradually warp the board. It's going to start to bend it like this. OK, when you put it on the table, you're going to notice that there's that rise on it and the way it's not really sitting straight. Um, and that's going to frustrate you and you may as well just chuck it in the bin. I mean, you, it's up to you what kind of quality board you want to build. But if you want to build a board that's going to last and look awesome, and keep flat, I recommend going with this option. So what you're gonna do is while you're in B&Q, go and get yourself some timber, really affordable. You can get a piece, it's sold in beams that come about sort of three times this length. And um, those cost uh, 2 99 each, I think it was. Very affordable, you're gonna to wanna to buy three of those, about, about three. And then you're, again, take it over to the guy who cuts things up in the shop for you and basically selling you want two of them at three meters and um, you're going to want four of them, uh, at least four of them, uh, slightly shorter than three meters and what, basically whatever the width is of the, of the wood, get that amount, in this case 38 millimeters, deduct that from the length of your board or the width of your board and then that will give you that measurement. In my case I've got two at 900 millimeters and four at 824 millimeters, okay? So you've then got your six, six, six beams of wood and your plywood, you're gonna take them home. Before you leave being q do make sure you have the following things. First thing you're gonna want are clamps. These things, you can find them in sort of tools section, I suppose, where, where you'll find hammers and things. Um, these, these are just, they're called G clamps, I think. Not sure. They, this my particular one's called a Mac Allister clamp. <laughs> They're sold in sets. Um, you get four in a set, if I recall right correctly, and they're not very expensive. But these are amazing, and I'll tell you why you need that soon. You're also going to need a nice big pot of PVA glue. Don't go for a tube because you're going to you're going to be 
building this terrain table is going to use a lot of PVA glue, I reckon. So you're going to want to uh, um, get yourself a decent amount like this. Uh, you're going to probably want a power drill. Um, so, or a hand drill if you've got if you're if you're old school if you're a hipster, <laughs> uh, you, or you can uh, go for a hand drill. But I recommend getting a decent power drill. Um, you can go in a shop like uh, Klaus Olsen or um, uh, your Argos or someone like that. You can pick up a power drill for as much as like twenty pound. Um, it won't be amazing, but it will be enough to be able to do this job. And um, you might want to have to buy some drill bits for that. I used a 3mm drill bit. And uh, you're going to want to buy some screws as well before you leave the hardware shop. I went for 3.5mm screws and they were about this long. They're not very much, they're about an inch long. They're not, they're not very uh, long at all. Okay, so I took it home. And what I did was um, basically smeared got my board and laid it on the table uh, smeared one side of one of those beams like the, I went for the 900 one first the, one of the two longest ones smeared one side in PVA glue not a great deal but enough clamped it on so put, put it on pressed it against the side there and then I used my clamps and get that nice and tight on there basically clamp it right up to the edge you want it nice and straight right along the edge there and you want to put four all, all four clamps along the piece of wood um, and once that's been clamped you're then going to want to drill holes uh, maybe four of them uh, that go right through the uh, plywood and into the timber and um, that's going to be where you put your screws and well while, while it's still clamped while the glue is still drying you're going to put the screws in as well and get that nice and tight really butted up against it once you've done one side you're going to turn around the board or rotate the board on your table and do another side and so on and so forth. Go round and round until you've boarded off the board, you've got the, all, all the edges are done. And uh, I'll just grab my final finished piece and then you'll end up with something that looks like this. So this is my, look it's standing up by itself and everything. This is my uh, terrain board. Now, just turn it around for you. The reason why I said get four of the slightly shorter beams is because you're going to want some in the middle. Um, now in my case I've only got one. I did intend to have two. One here and one slightly below it. The reason I've, the reason I've only gone for one is because when I got home I found out that one of my shorter beams was a bit too short. Um, the guy in the shop had cut it a little bit too short. Um, so I basically thought there's not really much point in sort of standing it in there because it's not going to be touching the sides really, so it's not much use. However, because when you go down there, there'll be some offcuts, there'll be a lot of spare stuff that he will offer you because you're paying for it, you may as well take it. Um, I decided that I'm probably going to keep, uh, sorry, use some of those offcuts, cut them down using my own jigsaw or a handsaw, whatever I can get my hands on in my tool shed and cut those down and stick those into here to fill out those spaces just to give it a bit more structure. I just basically don't want this board to warp in any areas. Um, so this is fixed to the to the wood. It's also screwed in here and screwed in there. For that I did use two longer screws but you can have a look for those and decide how long you need screws. It all depends on how wide your timber is I suppose. Um, yes, yeah, so as you can see it's very sturdy, very strong, no sign of bending or warping. It's, it's strong enough that it stands up by itself. You could even put weight on it. Um, I'm very happy with it. It was about 30 minutes of shopping, that's the B&Q part, and about two hours of gluing, drilling, gluing, drilling, screwing, and <laughs> the repetitive cycle. Just stick some music on or maybe put an episode of Blah Wars on uh, and uh, get to work. You will have fun. That's the hardest part of it now, I reckon. That's the actual physical labour done. Uh, the next stage, and this will be a future video, is we're going to cover this in glue and um, start experimenting with textures. Now, I'm, I, I've not actually built a terrain board this big before. I've certainly not done a desert terrain board this big. So I'm going to be a bit of an experimenter here. I want to create Tatooine. That's my ideal landscape. Uh, I mean, that's what I'm going to go for. Um, I don't really know. There's so many different things I could use like gravel and sand and 
other textures that are out there and I've never really experimented with all of them um, so I'm going to be using some of the offcuts that I mentioned that I took home with me and get this I'm going to chop this down to smaller squares maybe like vinyl size squares uh, like as in records and um, I'm going to flock a large area of each one with a different texture maybe a combination of textures and see what I find. I'm even going to try filler. Apparently polyfill is pretty good for making sort of, it can look like mud, I suppose, but I guess it can also look like desert if you uh, if you apply it correctly. So we'll be experimenting with textures in another video and then experimenting with color as well, using different paint methods to try and achieve a realistic uh, looking Tatooine board. But um, that's the construction side of it done, thank goodness. In fact, I say thank goodness, it was so much fun to, to actually build this board. I have actually asked for, uh, when I was down at B&Q, I did get them to cut me a second board, a uh, second one the same size, so I've got a spare one waiting, so if I want to actually build a second board, I can do. Now, the playing area for Star Wars Legion is supposed to be three foot by three foot, it's believed. Um, we don't actually know at this point 100% because the game isn't out yet, it's September now. Um, it may also be three foot by six foot. So if that's the case, just build a second board. Um, but I, I personally think it's gonna be three foot by three foot. The three foot by six just seems a bit too big. Like, like that sounds like an epic uh, all out war. And uh, I think it's more, by the sounds of it, it sounds more like a skirmish, kind of tabletop skirmish game, a bit like X-Wing, and that's played on a three by three um, uh, board. So three by three should be absolutely fine for your wargaming board. I hope you enjoyed this video, it was useful. Um, feel free to uh, share comments below and ask questions. I'm more than happy to answer as many questions as you want. Um, Cost-wise, if you're wondering how much this is gonna cost you, these are very these timber beams are very uh, cheap. I got three very long timber beams for um, about nine pound. And the plywood itself, I can't remember the exact price, but it was something like uh, eight pound or 12 pound for an enormous sheet, and I'm talking about uh, 1,220 by that's millimeters by 2,440 millimeters. So a huge sheet, which you're going to have to ask them to cut them down for you anyway, if you're going to try any any hope of getting that in your car. So um, have fun. Uh, let me know how you get on with building your terrain, and look out for my next video where we will be looking at surfacing my terrain.